what's going on? I am Greg Sussman. Welcome inside the FanDuel Hurry Up alongside Tom Vecchio. We talked on Tuesday about the star-studded lineups that you're going to have this week. But in order to get those lineups in there, you need some value plays. So tell us back for it. What's happening, Tom? I'm doing good. We have a 13-game slate. There's plenty of value options on the board. Uh, a ton of injuries last week, and we have a, a lot to break down. Some of those injuries came in surprising places, including Philadelphia, where, yeah, Jalen Rager left the game for a little while, but we didn't think he was going to tear a ligament in his finger. Well, now Rager's out and probably going on injured reserve the next couple of weeks, which means other weapons are going to have to step up, mainly just Sean Jackson, because the other wide receivers in Philly, J.J. Arthego outside, Greg Ward, you're not relying on them. Sure, Dallas Goddard's there and Zach Ertz is there, but the Sean Jackson's the major player with those deep targets and how much he's going to be on the field. You can rely on the Sean Jackson, especially at this price of $5,500. Yes, and speaking of deep targets, you know, looking at some of his baseline stats, they're not amazing to start. 16 targets, only eight receptions, but 282 air yards is the third most in the league. He comes in with a 17.6 A dot. That's average depth of target, which is the second highest in the league. It's been his calling card his entire career, getting downfield, getting behind the safeties, and scoring those deep touchdowns. 5,500, like you said, is a great price tag. A 25.5 implied team total going up against the Bengals, a very weak defense. Everything is lining up. You know, the opportunity is there for him. The role in the offense of getting down the field is something that they need. They have the underneath targets with those two tight ends. So uh, those, those deep targets I'm taking, the upside I'm taking in this matchup, I certainly want to buy into. We'll take that upside. You know, Carson Wentz is going to throw the ball quite a bit on Sunday. Let him take advantage here and hopefully go out wide and go deep. So Deshaun Jackson, he just needs the time to get it there. Speaking of injuries to wide receivers, it was one more of the same in Indianapolis, whereas Paris Campbell, who was off to a really wonderful start early on this season with Phillip Rivers throwing the ball, well, he's done for quite a while, it seems. So who's going to step up in his place? I think a lot of people in season long were expecting you to talk about Michael Pittman here as a good DFS play. And maybe you will. But the here and potentially the more valuable guy is Zach Pascal, who's $5,100, scored the touchdown in week two, showed a lot of value last year, and, and now gets called up for the practice squad, gets an opportunity here, and should be an interesting stash in week three. Yeah, I'm certainly on board with Pascal this week, $5,100. You know, only seven targets through the first two games. He did score that touchdown last week. Uh, notably in week one, only played on 62% of the snaps. But last week after the injury to Paris Campbell, that jumped up to 81%. So that's what we want to be buying into at $5,100. Uh, he leads the team with three red zone targets, obviously a small sample size only through two games. But they have a fantastic matchup this week going up against the New York Jets, giving the Colts a 27.0 implied team total. So, uh, you know, a little bit bigger than T.Y. Hilton, but we want to be looking to the lower price tag with Pascal and hopefully a continuing increase in snap rate. As Pascal's snap rate goes up, those touches will go up as well. Phillip Rivers is going to use the whole field. I'd like to see T.Y. Hilton get involved. But if you want to save a little money at $5,100, Zach Pascal against the Jets is something you can't pass up. Now, last week for Logan Thomas, it wasn't all great, but the underlying metrics, they were. Logan Thomas still the most targeted weapon alongside Terry McLaurin in that Washington football team offense. And Thomas remains a fantastic price on FanDuel. Under $5,000 once again, $4,900 for the Washington football team. Logan Thomas with Dwayne Haskins is a connection worth putting your money on here over on FanDuel this week. Exactly. And you touched on some of those things, a 25% target share in the Washington offense. He has 17 to total targets through the first two weeks, which is tied for third most among all tight ends. Uh, you know, only eight receptions on those 17 targets. So we'd like to see that rise a little bit, get a little bit, uh, you know, more consistency out of him on a week to week basis. But this is a spot for him to really rack up a few receptions and a touchdown going up against the Cleveland Browns. We're allowing 20.9 FanDuel points per game to opposing tight ends. That is dead last in the league. Yes, it's only through the first two weeks, but the Browns historically have been a team we've always targeted via the tight end position. So $4,900 for a player who's tied for the third most uh, targets at the tight end position? Sign me up. It's just too cheap to pass out $4,900 for all those targets, for all those looks against a team that is terrible at covering the tight end. Yeah, that all adds up to a fantastic play on FanDuel. That's Logan Thomas at $4,900. That's going to do it for us here on the FanDuel Hurry Up. Tom, we appreciate the time. Good luck this weekend. Same you.
We wrap up our DFS coverage this week. Tomorrow is Jim Sonis will join me as we take a look at the best teams to stack in DFS in week three. For Tom Vecchio, I am Greg Sussman. Thanks so much for watching. Enjoy Thursday Night Football tonight, and we'll see you back here tomorrow for another edition of the FanDuel Hurry Up.